Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Unfortunately, it's a little bit rainy outside. Actually, it's raining quite a lot. So it's a perfect day to do an inside project. So my project for today is I'm going to be installing some A-pillar pod lights on my Jeep Rubicon that's behind me. So I'm gonna take you along as I go through that process. So what I picked up for my Jeep is a pair of Rigid Industries DSS Pro pod lights for off-road use only. So these um, also have the side light feature to them. And uh, I also picked up the uh, replaceable lens covers in smoke and amber and also in clear. These will help to protect the lenses of the actual lights when I'm off-road or on-road from stone chips and rocks coming up. So we'll go ahead and take this stuff out of the box. See what we got in here. switch in there and some nice connectors. Paper. Here is one of the lights. Nice black powder coated aluminum housing with a lot of fins to uh, act as a heat sink to pull the heat away from the bulbs. Again, you can see the side lights on the one side. So you'll want to have these facing the outer side of the Jeep. So you want to make sure you put these on the right uh, side of the Jeep. You don't want to have that shining across your hood. Again, this one has the side lights on this side. This one's on the opposite side. So if I was looking at the grill in front of the Jeep, that's the orientation you'd want them. Nice little wiring lead. The weatherproof connector. Puts into the wiring on this. There's some hardware in here as well. Yeah, they come with their own brackets. Hmm. Some hardware that's not in the package. Instructions. Another flat washer. I also got some brackets to install them in the hardware on the Jeep. Show you that in a second. Let's come with our own fasteners too. So this is the driver's side of my Jeep, and uh, I picked up one of the brackets. And you're going to be removing this bolt and also the windshield bolt. And this bracket is going to bolt underneath those, and you reinstall the you reinstall the hardware and then that'll capture this bracket. And this hole on the end here, that's where you're gonna mount the pod light to. It'll kinda sit up on top of that bracket. All right, so we got things unboxed a little bit and what you're gonna see in the instructions here is that uh, this bracket goes into the light housing with the arms pointed towards the lens and then you put a bolt in through each side and it has a lock nut that goes on the inside of that tilt frame.
rods. You're going to need a 5 millimeter hex Allen wrench for the screws. I'm going to put a little bit of anti seize on the screws just in case they decide to rust. I'm not sure if they're stainless or not, but it doesn't hurt. That one's already in there. Take that one out. I'm just going to put that in lightly for the time being. Put any C's on the other one. Just need a little coat. The housing has uh, features in it that actually hold the lock nut for you, so you don't have to stick a wrench in there at all, so that's kind of a nice feature. So we'll go in ahead and install that on the other one as well. I'm not going to go crazy on the torque quite yet, just so I can move these around a little bit. for the brackets. Let's go ahead and get this harness out of here. I'm not going to use this switch because my Jeep Wrangler already has a switch panel inside of it in the dash, so Show you where this harness is going to go in a minute. This harness already comes with a relay. There's already a fuse in there as well. Let's see what we got. Well, that doesn't want to come off there too easy, does it? a 15 amp fuse in there. It's like a water tight fitting. Some leads to go to the battery in the ground.
this is where we're going to connect it into the switch switch wires and these these go out to the individual light pods Okay, so under the hood, the battery's on the passenger side. So if we look here, these cowls have quite a bit of space underneath them. And if you can see underneath behind that firewall, uh, like foam thing, there used to be a channel that can go from one side, driver's side, to the passenger side for the cable. Well, I'm not sure if this cable is going to be long enough to do that. We may just there's a little bit of a little bit of a gap right next to that bolt. And we may be able to sneak the harness underneath to get it up through and underneath this cowling. I'm going to go ahead and take these uh, cowling pieces off on each side and then we'll have better access to things in there. All right, what I've got here is a, this is a T40 Torx driver on the end of my ratchet. Loosen them all up a little bit first. This is the first time I've had these off of my jeep. Okay, so I think my plan of attack is I'm going to run it up along the top of the engine bay right below that weather seal that seals to the back of the hood. And I'm going to snake it underneath that weather seal there right to the outside of that bolt. And then that's going to come through on the back side and up. You're going to see it come up right there. And then the pod is going to sit on this back hole, the rear hole, and uh, also the bracket's going to attach into that bolt that attaches the windshield. And then the wiring harness connector will just sit in this empty void here. But I'll make sure that stuff is all taped down and stuff. I'll go ahead and connect all that stuff now, and I'll do that off camera so I don't bore you. Okay, so I think I've got this laid in there where I want it temporarily. And uh, this wire and connector here will tuck down inside this panel inside underneath that cover plate once it uh, I get everything mounted up. But uh, I'm going to take that screw out next up there. And uh, you have the wiring harness kind of laid in on the back. Just temporarily, just to make sure everything fits. And then I'll tidy it up later and I didn't do any of the connections over here yet but we'll get to that shortly. Again this is the passenger side. You can see the pause light just sitting up there for now to connect it in and you can see how I have it routed underneath that weather barrier. 
so everything's loose, but I'll I'll be tidying that up and getting that so it's uh, not loosey goosey in there. Okay, this upper screw here that attaches the windshield on the windshield hinge, that is a T50. I have a driver on my ratchet, and I'll go ahead and loosen that up. You want to be sure that's seated in there good so it doesn't strip out. There you go. Just kind of loosen that a little bit. Okay, so I got the bracket over here. You can see how this gets mounted up here. This screw goes right into that hole that's on the bracket. Let's go ahead and lightly attach that for the moment. That bracket comes with its own mounting hardware. This is a screw and a spacer that's going to replace the factory screw. So that spacer goes on top of it. And then the screw is going to go down through the spacer as well in the bracket. But you can't put this in until you put that cowling over top of this again because there's a... Uh, a boss, a plastic boss on that that interfaces in there. Let me go ahead and put that cowling back on. So we can get that tucked in there nice. Alright. Now I'll get tucked down in there. Just gonna put the screws in lightly. With this screw supplied in the kit, I'm using a four millimeter hex driver in the ratchet. Just going snug. I don't want to get too crazy on that. And I'm going to retighten that Torx on the windshield bolt. Okay, just tight. That's all that needs to be. And now we're going to install the light pod onto that bracket. And just a heads up, the fasteners that they supply in the kit, they are stainless steel. And I highly recommend you put anti-seize compound on the threads of the bolt, carriage bolt, because stainless steel has a nasty habit of galling when you're tightening it, and then it will essentially cold weld itself together and you will have to cut it off to remove it. Just a heads up, you want to check and make sure the screw does not contact this cowling piece 
when you have this installed. I had to cut off approximately an eighth of an inch to three sixteenth of an inch off the length of the screw, just so it doesn't the tip of it doesn't contact the cowling when it's bolted in there together. So just a heads up. All right, I finally got that installed. That was actually a pain in the butt to get that in there. You just don't have a whole lot of room to maneuver with your fingers underneath there. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that little wiring harness, and make that little neater. Get all that sticking up above there. Just so that's free, that looks good. We'll do the other side and get back to you. All right, folks, I'm back at it. And uh, I will say that it was quite a fight to get the carriage bolt and the light pod and the flat washer underneath there and the lock washer and the nut and all that stuff started and you can barely get your fingers in there. It, you will say a couple of four letter words and fight with it a little bit, but eventually you will get it um, as I did. But uh, right now everything is um, somewhat tightened up. I don't really know where I want them positioned quite yet, but for the moment things are, um, things are snugged up and it looks pretty good. The wire is just tucked in behind there, has plenty of room, it's not pinched or anything. I don't know if you can see in there. Try and shine a light in there. You can see the connector up top there and it leads in behind there. There's the passenger side one. You can also see the cable squeezing down in between there. Again, it's gonna be a fight on this side. I had to remove about 3 16th of an inch on both sides. And I might actually attempt to take them out again at some point and remove more because I don't like how that sticks down there that much. It's not necessary, but um, anyway, that's a fight for another day. After more thought about this, I've come up with a different way to get that uh, uh, bolt attached with the nut on the bottom that holds the light pot onto that little bracket. And uh, I'm gonna uh, remove this a while and uh, shorten that screw on the bottom because it's just too close. I can see myself scraping my knuckles or fingers on the sharp threads when I go to wash the, the Jeep. So I'm going to take care of that now and um, I've just put a blue shop towel on the cowling here to protect the paint. Um, obviously I don't want any scratches on it right now but um, at least due to my uh, fumbling fingers um, dropping the light pot or the screw or whatever but anyway um, what my plan is is to loosen the two bolts that attach the bracket to the Jeep and take that off and I'll be able to um, loosen the screw that holds it and get that nut on uh, a whole lot easier. Sometimes you can't uh, see the forest through the trees so um, my first go around that I learned a lesson and I'm gonna pass it along to you guys mount the pod onto the bracket before you put the bracket onto the Jeep. That way you have the screw and nut started and you don't have to fumble with it like I did. So this takes a half inch wrench on the bottom nut. I'm just gonna loosen it a while just so it's loose so I can deal with it with my fingers. And the smaller screw takes a four millimeter hex Allen driver. Just loosen that a little bit till it's loose. And the 
one back here is a Torx number 50. It's gonna leave that set there and hang by the cable for now. I'm gonna go ahead and cut, cut off a few of the threads on the nut and I'll be right back. Okay, we're all back together, and you can see the screw is just barely below the bottom of the nut. That's what I'd like to see better. Doesn't need to be any more far below than that, and I probably won't scrape my fingers or my knuckles on that, but maybe I will. We'll see. I'm gonna do the other side, and we'll continue on the video. So the next battle is gonna be the wiring underneath the hood and getting the switches connected. Um, the wiring for the switches is tucked down in here, so I'm gonna have to uh, undo the tape and uh, get those where I can see them. There should be four wires in there because there's four switches in the dash, and two of them are, I believe, a higher amperage 
and two of them are lower amperage. I think it's 40 and 15. If somebody knows they can correct me down below, but for these two lights, um, I'm not gonna be using more than 15, so I'm gonna use a low amperage switch. I think it's three and four you can pick from. One and two, I think, are the high amperage ones. But uh, yeah, I'll start working on the wiring next. I found the wires that I'm supposed to be looking for, and they were just wrapped up around this harness that's tucked up on the side there. And uh, I just took off the electrical tape that was kind of wrapping them up, and uh, they kind of fell loose. So this is the, uh, the four for the four switches. I'm gonna cut this uh, tape off back cut it back a little bit so I can work with the ends here and put some connectors on so I'll get that done be right back okay so folks so I got the wires um, revealed and all I had to do was take a razor blade now you will have to work at this uh, be careful not to go all the way through this uh, sheathing and actually cut the wires but it will take some effort because this stuff does not cut very easily. But what we have in here is the two larger wires are for the auxiliary switches one and two. And auxiliary switch one is with the beige, with the pink stripe, and that's the one that I see there. The other one is green with a pink stripe. Those are 240 amp circuits. And auxiliary switch three and four are 15 amp circuits. Three is the orange with the pink stripe. You can kind of see it. There's the pink stripe on it. It's very hard to see sometimes. And then there's a dark blue with a pink stripe. You can see the pink there as well. Here it is right from the manual. Auxiliary switch one, 40 amp. Auxiliary switch two, 40 amp. Three and four, 15 and 15. And you can see their colors. I believe I'm gonna use auxiliary switch three. So what I'm gonna do is on this orange, orange one here, I'm gonna cut off this connector and uh, crimp on a connector that I can use to connect to the wiring harness and because this is a, a relay already on the on the harness I'm going to be tying into the blue connector right here I'm going to cut this one off and use my own connector okay got the wires exposed and I got that uh, connector cut off from the factory and got my cable exposed so I can put my connector on. Um, also, two other connections that you're gonna wanna do is uh, there's two leads for power and ground for this circuit. Um, obviously, the one with the heavy red cable goes to the uh, po positive side of the battery. It's underneath that plastic cover there. We're gonna We're gonna try and put it on that terminal right here on the end. And the other cable is black with a red stripe, that's for ground. And I'm gonna put that under this terminal right here on the negative side of the battery. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that connector off. Again, I'm doing the blue wire. I'm gonna go ahead and strip the insulation off. Twist all those wires together. And I'm using a butt splice connector that has shrink tubing already on it. And I'll 
go ahead and hook up to the orange one. Sometimes you need three hands for this. All right. I'll tidy up the wiring later, but let me go Turn on the ignition and uh, see if we've got power to the lights. Should. All right, I lowered the hood just for the moment and uh, I'm inside the Jeep. I turned all the lights off in the shop, in my garage, and there's no windows in my garage, so it's pretty dark in here, except uh, right now the running lights on the Jeep are on. I know this isn't a real good test, but for the moment just want to see if it works and I will hit the auxiliary three for the lights Wow that uh, sure lit things up I'll uh, do a, a test at night out on the road out on some off-road situations just to get a little bit better of a perspective on this but so far it works and uh, I'm really happy I'll get the wiring tidied up and I'll show you how I did all that, um, but I won't uh, bore you with that right now, so I'll check back in a little bit. So I got some of the wiring handled. The wire that goes up across the firewall from side to side to each light pod. So what I used are these small little uh, cable tie bases. They have adhesive on the one side. You take that little paper off and then you clean the clean the body off real good. I used uh, alcohol and made sure that was dry and clean and then uh, a couple little zip ties. A couple little zip ties across the way and that's all nice and tidy and I'm Working on the other wiring over here, I have this uh, butt splice connector that had already heat shrink, heat shrink tubing on it, and uh, used my map torch and lightly melted that. You can see the sealants coming out both ends, so that's good. I'm just going to wrap this up with uh, electrical tape, and then we'll tidy up the rest of this wiring and tuck it down in between the battery and the body, and uh, mount the relay somewhere and we'll be all done.
So here it is all done, and uh, I'm gonna call this a wrap. So you can see the cables are routed in there and tucked down inside. One thing I did was I mounted the relay to this forward bolt right there. Put a little couple of spacers in between there just to space it out. Hold everything up nicely and have it connected to the battery. I'll probably be adding some more lights in the future, so I might address this and make it look a little bit nicer too in the future. So anyway, that's a wrap for the install. Stay tuned. If you like this video, make sure to hit that like button and please subscribe and comment below. Thanks.